Grace Youth, how are we feeling tonight? Yes, yes. We are in week three of our series, EXO. EXO, if you've gotten something out of this series so far, like God's helped you, there's been some clarity, maybe you broke up with somebody and now you're a better person for it, uh, can you just raise your hand like this series has been helpful? Great, four of you. I'm so glad that we're doing uh, this. Five of you, that's cool. Uh, tonight, tonight, uh, tonight is Purity Night. And uh, this is something that has become a culture here at Grace Youth where uh, part of the series is when um, we make this declaration, this commitment towards living our life in purity and specifically sexual purity. So here in just a few moments, um, we're going to invite parents and uh, some of the like just church members that are here to, uh, to stand with us. And we're going to make some commitments tonight, but as we uh, kind of journey in and venture into what tonight is, uh, if this is your first week, maybe you're visiting for the very first time, first of all, shout out, you're already family. Welcome to the youth fam, uh, both here in person and online. But I want to give you a little bit of uh, context as to what we're talking about, because when you hear this word purity, uh, especially in culture today when it comes to um, walking in purity, sexual purity, uh, purity as it relates to the Bible, culture would look at that and, um, and, and say it's, it's prudish or it's a, an old way to live or this is how your grandparents believed you should act and operate. And those were rules and regulations for a past generation. And what I want to do is I, I want to take a look at God's word, his truth, which by the way, uh, God's truth, God's truth does not falter or fail depending on what culture's opinions are. So whether culture agrees with the word of God or not, God's word still stands firm and true. Truth is not a relative thing. Truth is fixed. And when Jesus spoke it, when the word of God went forth, um, that has been and will always be truth. So what we're doing tonight as we look about uh, or look at purity is we're not looking at the idea of purity through the lens of outdated opinions. We're looking at purity through the lens of God's word and his truth for us. So I want you to go ahead and turn with me. Go to Psalm uh, 5110. Psalm 5110. Go ahead and turn on your Bible or open it up. And I want you to... Um, to uh, grab a, a fresh note page, whether that is like physical pen and ink or you're, you're typing away in your phone. And, and I want us to put down some things tonight that I really do believe are going to be uh, helpful and restorative, that are going to give some life, maybe to some dead areas, are going to bring some encouragement and confidence your way. So Psalm 5110, this is where we're going to kind of live tonight. But it says this, it says, create in me a pure heart, O God. And renew a steadfast spirit within me. Everybody say create. Fact. You may not realize this or not. But the only one with the ability to create is God. That everything else that has ever been created has actually just been a modification of something that God already spoke into existence. You go, oh, well, like, what about technology? Created from things that God filled the earth with. If not tangible physical things, ideas of mankind, which, by the way, who gave mankind the brain to think ideas? God did. Now, like, it seems like such a simple thing, but, but I want you to understand this, that creating, creation can only be done by the creator. Everything else is either a manipulation or an imitation of something that's already been created. So when we talk about purity, and the Bible describes it one way, and culture comes along and says, well, it's kind of this other thing, it's a manipulation or an, an imitation of something that God already set in motion. And what the psalmist is describing, this create in me, what, what's incredible, I'm going to pull a couple of like just factual things out of here. Um, the first thing being that, that the only one who has the capacity or the ability to create is, is God himself. But the psalmist is also, he's praying uh, the miraculous we learned this last week when uh, my beautiful wife and I talked about uh, love and, and, and sex. We, we used this scripture, and I think we actually used it week, week one as well, but Proverbs 21, 2 says, all a man's ways seem right to him, but the Lord, it is the Lord, it is the Lord who weighs the hearts. 
That is to say that my opinion is the way that I live is okay. But when, when God gets a hold of it, when God steps into it, he goes, that may be your opinion, but let me show you what truth is. So when the psalmist is saying, create in me a pure heart, the, the author is recognizing that there is something in him that only God can step in and do and give and bring. So the, the, the psalmist is, is praying a, a really big prayer. He's praying for the miraculous to take place. In fact, Scripture also talks about, um, uh, uh, above all else, the heart is deceitful. Like we can't even trust our heart most of the time. Our, our heart tells us that everything is good um, one minute, and then the next, it's like everything is bad and everyone's against me. And I, I can't even trust my own heart sometimes, which is why I need the creator, the one who gave me my heart, to step in and create in me a pure heart. God is the only ability, or God is the only uh, one with the ability to create. The, the psalmist, the author, David, he's, he's speaking of something miraculous to take place. The other thing uh, that we pull from just this simple one-liner, this, this, this one verse, is that when he's speaking about creating in himself, for God to create in, in himself a pure heart, that creating is something that takes place instantaneously, but then also progressively. What do I mean by that? Um, the moment that I ask Jesus into my life, I'm saved. The moment that, that I ask Jesus to forgive me of my sin, to purify me. It happens in that moment, but it's also progressive, which means it's something that I must walk out. So while I make a decision for purity in the moment, that is great, and that is the beginning, but for the rest of my life, I must also walk it out. So as the psalmist is saying, create in me a pure heart, he's recognizing, one, that only God can do it, Two, that in a moment God can step in and bring that purity. And three, that it's also progressive. How does that apply to you and I? As we're thinking about, as we're talking about our purity, how does that apply to you and I? Well, I, I want to pull um, just a few truths for us to stand on um, out of God's word tonight. And the first one I, I, I want you to write down wherever you're taking notes. I want you to write this down. Purity is for everyone. Purity is for everyone. Repeat it after me. Say, purity is for everyone. Come on, with some conviction in your heart. Say, purity is for everyone. Then turn to somebody on your left or your right, look them in the eye and say, purity is for you. Why is this important? We can think that purity is reserved for the spiritual elite. Oh, Pastor Garrett, Pastor Andrea, they're pure. But I'm a teenager, I'm all over TikTok, I'm the furthest thing from pure. <laughs> Pastor Dan and Pastor Rachel, oh, they're, they're pure. But like, I've been in 25 relationships just this year, and it's only February. <laughs> I'm, I'm the furthest thing from pure. Or I've got a past, there's no way that purity is for me. Can I say this? Purity is for everyone. Let me reveal to you the man that is writing this create in me a pure heart line. Let me reveal to you who he is. He is an adulterer and a murderer. And by the end of his life, you know what scripture writes about him? That he is a man after God's own heart. How is it that a murderer and adulterer could be described at the end of his life as a man after God's own heart? You, you know how? Because he understood that purity was something that he could walk out despite his past mistakes. So a lot of times we consult our past to tell us who we can be in the future. And when we do that, we can never walk in God's promises. But you know what God never does? He never consults your past to determine who you will be in the future. All he consults is what his son did on the cross. And he says, in my son, you are a new creation. Purity is for everyone. So when you walked in here, maybe with some shame, some past mistakes, maybe some habits that you can't kick, some dark secrets that you hold, some things that people don't know about you that you keep really well hidden, purity is for everyone. Everyone. Nobody's too far gone. Nobody's done too much. Nobody's given too much away. Nobody's had too much stolen from them. Purity is for everyone, for every person for every individual. So I want you to understand that your purity is 
more about relationship with Jesus than it is about keeping rules for Jesus. Now, this may seem like semantics. You go, well, aren't you just kind of playing with language a little bit? No, no, no. Because if, if I don't understand that purity is more about my relationship with Jesus, then what I'm trying to do is just do. Do more and do more and do more. And can I just tell you this? You'll never be able to do enough to be pure enough. That's why David goes, I need for you, O oh God, to step in and create in me a pure heart. Because if you don't do it, I can't. Without you, I'm a murderous adulterer. I don't stack up. I can't measure up. I can't sacrifice, do enough. I can't be good enough. I can't earn my way to a place of purity. So when we talk about purity, it's not just about chasing uh, down a bunch of rules, but rather it's connecting my life with my living Savior and living life step in step with Jesus. When I try to keep the rules, I'll never walk in purity. But when I keep in step with Jesus, it makes the pursuit of purity so much easier. In fact, write that down. Purity is a pursuit, not of what to do, but rather who to live in, who to abide in, Jesus Christ. My purity is tied to my relationship with him. How's your relationship with Jesus? Is it rocky? Is it non-existent? Maybe you're in the best place you've ever been with Jesus. That's incredible. Can I just say your, your purity is tied to your relationship with Christ? So if you feel distant from God, it's going to be really difficult for you to walk out purity. My purity, your purity, is tied to our relationship with Jesus Christ more than it is than just keeping a set of rules. Matthew talked about, or excuse me, Jesus talked about this in Matthew chapter 23. He said, uh, first clean the inside of the cup and dish, and then the outside will also be clean. What he was referencing was that there is a purity that comes by way of a work in your heart and your soul that only he can do. And he was referencing some religious leaders of the day who were really good about having it all together on the outside. Some of us, we are, we're really good at making sure it looks together on the outside. And Jesus was going, I see you even though everybody else doesn't. You got everybody else fooled but really what I want to do is I want to do a work on the inside first, on the heart first, on, on the soul first. What I'm really concerned about, in fact, uh, God's word also talks about how man judges the outward appearance, but it's, it's the inside, it's the heart, it's the soul, it's the spirit. That's what God's concerned with. So are you more focused with trying to be put together and, and look like you've you're doing it right on the outside, following the rules and making sure that your image is put together. Are you more focused on Jesus touching those places in your heart and in your spirit that are rooted in shame or regret, that are hidden, that are locked away in the dark that people don't know about? Oftentimes we think that we're too dirty for Jesus to do something with us, but his word says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were dirty, while we were messed up, while we were fallen, while we were distant, while we were in our worst state, that's when Jesus was dispatched and came for you and I. Purity is for everyone, for everyone. The second thing that I want to show you today about purity is that uh, purity is his gift to give, but your decision to make. Purity is his gift to give to you and I, but it's my decision. It's my decision to make. Just like if I were to wrap up a PS5 and I came over to Andrew Limley and I was like, bro, I got you this PS5. I've been working at Chick-fil-A. Um, I've been doing um, six to 10 shifts because I'm a youth pastor. And so I just go straight over to Chick-fil-A afterwards and I just put in my four hour shifts and I've just been doing that for the last six months and I've just been saving and I got you this PS5. I wrapped it up. It's loaded with games. Here it is. It doesn't matter how extravagant 
or how sacrificial the gift was. If Andrew doesn't take it, all it is is a gift squandered. We've shelved it. And it is in our decision that we actually take a hold of the gift that Jesus gives us. It's this beautiful gift. It's this great gift. In fact, um, culture has done a fantastic job of making you and I believe that our sexual purity is actually a way to uh, strip away our fun, to take away the best parts of life. Culture has done a great job of of making um, sexual purity and the the boundary lines of Scripture as something that seems judgmental or or prudish or an old way of thinking. And and God is going, I set this up to to protect you, to give you the, the best, most secure, and safest way of life. Because I know what's on the other side of that. I know what it is like to um to to be hollow and empty, to uh, to be unfulfilled, to be lacking. His word says that that sin is fun for a season. Can I just say that sexual uh, immorality, impurity, it it will be fun for a season. But you talk to any student that is hopped from relationship to relationship, website to website, uh, toxic thought pattern to toxic thought pattern, at some point they come to the end of the road and they go, I'm unfulfilled, I'm lacking, I'm, I'm empty. I don't value myself any longer. Purity is his gift to give, but my decision to make. Let me ask you, how has your decision to take a hold of that gift, how has that been recently? How is that decision for your life? Because it's a daily decision. It's not a one-time decision. Am I making those daily decisions needed to pursue purity? Purity. And when I begin to ask myself that, then all of a sudden it's, it's not just a, a thought. It's not just an app. It's not just a relationship. It's not just a, a Netflix binge of a certain show. It's, it's not just um, a, a thought pattern. It's, it's not just the shows I'm watching or the music I'm listening to or the websites that I visit or the inappropriate conversation. It's not just, but all of those things become the, the decisions that either lead me in the way of my purity or walking in the opposite direction. Every day, I gotta wake up and choose purity all over again. And the beautiful thing about God is that his his mercies are renewed daily. His word says that his mercies are new daily. So if I messed up yesterday, he still has mercy for today. And if I mess up today, he's got mercy for tomorrow. Now, does that give me license to knowingly sin? Absolutely not. But what it does uh, recognize and show me is that I, I'm not perfect. But every day I have the ability to make the decision and to walk in and walk out purity. His gift, my decision. His gift, my decision. Will you make the decision? Nobody can make it for you. Mom can't make it for you. Dad can't make it for you. Your friends can't make it for you. Your boyfriend can't make it for you. Your girlfriend won't make it for you. Let me tell you this. Culture will never make it for you. And having no decision at all is actually a decision. A lot of times we think, well, I'll just kind of figure this out and I'll just wander through this. And if I get there, I get there. And if I don't, I don't. No decision is a decision. A lack of a decision is a decision. In fact, most of us end up somewhere that we never wanted to be because we didn't make a decision first. Y'all know this, uh, this phrase, if you plan to fail, you, if you fail to plan, you plan to, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Every good team knows that you've got a playbook. There's a book of decisions. If this happens, then we're going to do that. Every gamer knows. When this happens, I do that. You know when it comes test time, if you're a good student, when this, when this goes down, I'm going to do that. We're on our A game. We're at our best when we come in, decisions made beforehand. Could you imagine trying to play a skilled team without having practiced before, conditioning before, made decisions of how you were going to play before? Because every day you wake up, the enemy's got a plan for you. He's got a playbook, and most of the time, he's only got like one 
maybe two plays, and he keeps hitting you with the same play over and over and over again. But because we don't make the decision that when this happens, I'm going to do this, then he hits us again and again and again and again. And it may be a variation, but a lot of times it's the same plan. Are you making decisions today before my feet even hit the ground? Lord, I give you my minds, I give you my emotions, and I give you my hearts. I don't care who tries to DM me. I'm not giving them attention. Today, I'm focusing on you. I know my ex is going to try to, they're going to try to take me to lunch. And Lord, you know my weakness is Chick-fil-A. And they know it is as well. But Lord, today I make a decision. I don't care if it's a 10-piece or a whole 60 platter. Lord, I'm yours. You got to know how to talk to them. I know, God, I know when that song comes on, um, it conjures up certain thoughts. So you know what? I'm going to wipe that playlist from, from Spotify. I'm, I'm not even, I'm not going to listen to that because my mind today belongs to you. I know all my friends are watching, uh, <laughs> Euphoria, that's exactly right. I know all my friends are watching it. I know everybody's talking about it. But God, I also know how gratuitously sexually violent it is. And that, in that, I gain nothing from it. So I'm not watching it. I'm not watching it. Students, we're, we're living in a culture that celebrates sexual immorality. They, they don't just tolerate it, they celebrate it. So it's going to require you, if you're going to walk in purity, to make a daily decision. It doesn't just happen. The enemy is coming for you. Why? Because he knows what's wrapped inside of you. The mad potential in you. The generational curses that you have the ability to break. The, uh, you have the ability in and through you for a campus to come to Christ. Your family to know who he is. So no wonder the enemy is coming for a generation that's so connected. Could you imagine an entirely connected generation collectively going, we choose purity. Could you imagine what the world would look like? <sighs> Purity is his gift, but it's, it's my decision. And for some of us, we've been hiding some things. I'll say it this way. God, God cannot heal what you will not confront. And tonight as we talk about purity, I, I, I want us to confront some things that we've just been living with and been okay to hide in the dark. And that confrontation doesn't come with condemnation. It comes with love. God's going, I want to heal that. Those habits, those thoughts, those relationships, those, those sites, those apps, those shows, those songs, those, I, I, I want to heal you from all of that. Some of you can't go two minutes without a sexual thought running through your mind. Why? Because our culture is so steeped in it. It's everywhere, y'all. I actually have to work at being pure. I got to make a decision to walk in that. It's a gift. It's a free gift. God goes, here it is. But I got to make decisions to pick that gift up. Number three. Number three. And this is where I want to leave us tonight. We're going to make some commitments here in just a moment. But number three, uh, purity is, is a process. We talked about it from Psalm 51. Remember, it says, create in me, O God, a pure heart. Creation is a process. Go, go all the way back to Genesis, the first book of the Bible. As God was creating, it was a process. He spoke it, and then it came to be. For six days, God is creating, and on the seventh day, y'all know what he did? He took a nap. <laughs> it's good for you to rest. Some of you are like on the, the six days resting, one day creation, <laughs> like you're on the flip-flop. Purity, my purity is a process. When I pray the prayer, God comes in and makes me new. But it's also a process that I gotta work on. What do you mean by that, Pastor Elisha? Let me, uh, let me make it real, maybe practical for you. It took your mind several months or even years to think the way that it thinks, negatively or positively. Neural pathways had to be created. 
So for some of us, we, we do have some addictive tendencies. We've got some t- toxic um, thought patterns. It took time to get there. Sometimes the healing process by which God walks us through, it takes time for that healing of the mind, of the heart, of the spirit to be righted, to be made new. So my purity is a process. And this is good news. Why is this good news? Because some of us, we pray a prayer, then we leave and we go, but my mind is thinking the same things. I guess God didn't really do it. No, your purity is a process. We leave here and we go, but my emotions kind of feel the same way. Why do I still want bad things? Why do I still crave uh, bad stuff? Listen, I've had Wingstop enough to know that I just crave something deep fried and salty. It doesn't matter if it's 1 a.m. or 1 p.m. If I've had something bad and tasty, I'll crave it. So when I start working on purity in my life, it may have been negative. It's going to take a little bit for you to retrain some appetites inside of yourself. What you ran to, to be fulfilled by, you're going to now have to start through the process to begin to run towards new things, holy things, pure things, right things. It is a process. So give yourself some grace because God has it for you. He's not looking for you to walk out the back perfect. He's, walk, he's, he's looking for you to walk out the back making progress. S- step in step, arm in arm with him, moving in the direction of purity. I spoke to a student uh, before service And he said, last year, Purity Night was the line in the sand for me where my life changed and I started to do things differently. And he said, I I don't know what this year is going to be, but I'm I'm praying that God would use me this year to help someone else. Man, what, what would it look like? One year. One year where you got serious. You drew a line in the sand and you said, no more. What I've tolerated, no more. What I've been okay to live with, no more. What the enemy has fooled me into believing that I should settle for, no more. I'm walking in the direction of Jesus. And when I do, I know in that way, there is fulfillment. There is healing. There is hope. There is restoration. I am a new creation. Student, here in just a couple of moments, when we make a commitment for sexual purity, let these not just be hollow words. Let this be a line in the sand where you say, my mind, my heart, my body, all of it, I commit to you, O Lord. And I'm not gonna renege on my commitments. I'm not going back on my word. I'm not being shrunk back by the enemy. Because in you, I'm a new creation. I'm victorious. I'm made whole. I'm redeemed. I'm helped. Here in just a moment, I'm going to ask some of our pastors to come up and lead us in some of these commitments. But before I do, um, we can't step over the truth that before we can be pure, we we need relationship with Jesus. So that's where I want to lead us first. If tonight you go, you know what? I don't have a relationship and I need to make one first. I've not said yes to Christ. Or maybe you have and you've walked away and you're going, you know what? I, I want to walk in purity, but I recognize I need a relationship with Jesus first. And I'm not just talking to students in this place. I'm talking to parents. I'm talking to leaders. If tonight you need to make a decision for Jesus here in just a moment, I'm gonna give you that opportunity. And I'd ask that all over the room, you would just bow your heads and close your eyes. Here in just a moment, I'm gonna lead the whole room in a prayer. But if you need to make that decision without any shame, nothing but love and in just a moment, celebration for your decision, if that's you, you say, I need to make a decision for Jesus. When I get to three, I just want you to shoot your hand up. One, two, three three. You say, that's me. Come on, hands going up. Keep them up for just a moment. Yeah, many hands going up. Thank you. I see y'all. I see y'all. 
I see you guys back there. I see you. I see you. That's incredible. I see you back there, bro. Good for you, man. I see you. Is there anybody else? I'm going to wait just one more moment. I see you. It's amazing. Okay, all over the room, here's what we're going to do. We're going to stand to our feet. And I'm going to lead you in a prayer. I'm going to ask that the whole room, our online family, everybody tonight would pray with those individuals that raised your hand. If you raised your hand, let me just say this. This is not a one-time decision. This isn't a one and done. When we say this prayer, what we're doing is we're giving the whole of our life to Jesus, realizing that he now has the ability and the authority to speak into whatever area. We don't just give him a portion. We give him the whole thing. And when we do, he comes in and he makes us new, makes us whole. So all over the room, would you repeat after me? Say, Jesus, tonight we bring you all of who we are. And we ask for your forgiveness for that which we have done that has broken your heart. Thank you for going to the cross for me, dying for me. I love you, Lord. Thank you for loving me. I declare you as Lord and my Savior. Heal me. Make me whole. And show me who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, Grace Youth Fam. Let's show love for those that raise their hand.